My name is Anne-Marie Lepare, and I'm an occupational therapist. Welcome to the third Taking Care segment on modifications of your home. Here, I will walk you through various tips and tricks to think about in the bedroom. This room is important because it's a place where usually much needed rest can be achieved, where one gets dressed and prepared for the day, and where some or most of the help with care might be given. In most cases, the door width is not an obstacle in accessing the bedroom, even when using a mobility aid. The recommended true width is 32 inches. Did you have to use the stairs to reach your bedroom, or is it on the main level? If or when stairs become problematic, it will be important to consider moving the bedroom to the same level as the kitchen and the bathroom. Now stand in the doorway and take a look at the space, furniture, and clutter. Is there a threshold? Is there enough room to walk around? What kind of floor covering is there? Any clutter? And what about the lighting? For the actual bed, what is the height, the width, the type, the built? Which side of the bed do you sleep? Is it closer to the bedroom door? or closest to the ensuite bathroom. Here are some possible modifications and energy conservation techniques. Remove area rug. Low pile wall-to-wall -wall carpeting is usually okay, but if it's thick and plush, it would be more of a problem with mobility and transfers. Remove clutter to decrease the risk of falls and rearrange furniture to increase space to move around. Optimally, a 36-inch space between pieces is recommended. Now you can switch sides of where you sleep in the bed. You can add pillows or use a wedge pillow or install a bed rail to help you go from lying to sitting and to assist you to get in and out of the bed. A transfer belt or a transfer disc or even a floor to ceiling pole could be helpful when you need physical assistance to get up from the bed and sit in the chair. Plan what you will wear and take all the clothing items before you actually start getting dressed to avoid unnecessary steps and energy expenditure. Sit as much as possible while getting dressed, either on a bed or on a chair with armrest. For a taller person with leg weakness, the normal height of a bed or a chair is usually a problem. You can use loose clothing easy closure or opening, like Velcro and elastic waist, and when needed, adapted clothing. You can move the closet shelvings or rods to a lower level. You can remove the closet doors. And you can use assisted devices to help you get dressed, like a button hook, a reacher, a sockade, a long handle shoehorn, or elastic laces. Here's an example of some teaching I did at home with the family. There you go, Mr. Smith, come in. I'm really happy to see that you removed the area rugs, okay, in your bedroom. I'm also very happy to see that you've lowered everything so they're easily accessible. You'll conserve your energy like that, okay? Okay, hold on. I've got to stop you right there. This is not the best way to go into your bedroom. You see your walker is turned. I would highly suggest to switch place with your wife to sleep over here so you'd have better access to your uh, bed and have less chance of falls. Okay. Here's an example of some teaching I did at home with the family. So Mr. Smith, I brought some uh, assistive devices, okay, to help you get dressed. This is a sockade, okay. You see your sock is already put on like that. So using both handles, you're going to use your hands and you're going to pull to pull up your sock. This helps if you can't bend down or you have lower extremity fatigue. There you go. Keep pulling. You're going to get it. There you go. See? Your sock is put on. Now this is a long-handed shoehorn where you put your foot normally in your slipper. And it's often difficult to put the heel in it. So by putting the shoehorn, yeah, take your time by putting the shoehorn. There you go. How's that? 
Good. And lastly, this is a reacher. Okay, again, when you have difficulty bending down or reaching up, this reacher here, by using the handle with enough strength, will help you to close this and be able to reach object. I can actually reach the handle of this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Another thing, too, that's very convenient is the tablet. That's an environmental control device because it's linked to, linked to different things in the house. So with that, you'll be able to control the heating of your house, uh, the TV, the volume, and also the lights. If you press here, right here, you'll see the lights will dim. Yeah. There you go. When do you need to consider using an electric bed? When adjustable head of bed, foot of bed, and overall bed height is necessary. These beds can make a big difference in comfort for the person with ALS. For example, allow for easier breathing. They can help with transfers when receiving physical help or when an equipment is needed. They optimize caregiver safety and prevention of injury by allowing easier access to both sides of the bed during care and transfers. It is very common to have to rethink the bedroom layout and furniture when the electric bed is to be used in the bedroom. Now the electric bed come in various sizes, but 36 inch and 39 inch wide are the most common ones and the ones that are usually covered by a subsidy. Remember that a space of a minimum of 24 inches on each side of the bed is needed to allow the caregiver to provide assistance safely. When an electric lift is needed on wheels or on the ceiling, more space on the side of the bed where the transfer will happen need to be present. If all of the above are not possible in the actual bedroom, it might mean relocating the bedroom or the electric bed to another part of the house. Environmental control aids could be helpful not only to control the electric bed functions, but also the lights, the TV, the heating or cooling systems, the phone, and other communication devices. Here's an example of some teaching I did at home with the family. So I know it's been getting more difficult to get out of bed. I'd like for you to show me how you do it. Good. Yeah, hold on to the armrest. There you go. Slowly. Okay. Oh, boy. oh yeah. It's definitely getting more difficult, huh? Yes. And I can see you were showing some, uh, you know, back pain. So it might be time to consider uh, electric bed okay, to help not only with your comfort, to be able to raise your head of your bed, your feet, but the entire bed to help with your care and to help with the safety of your caregiver and your safety also. Okay. Here are some examples of accessibility modifications within the home. As ALS progresses, in some cases, as hands, arms, and legs become weaker, environmental access and control become more of a challenge. Opening doors, negotiating stairs, operating lights, electronics, loss of speech, speaking loudly enough or clearly enough can be examples of common problems that adaptive equipment and modifications can help to address. The field of assistive technologies has exploded in growth in recent years as more households embrace internet and Wi-Fi technology. This has allowed people living with ALS and their caregivers many more exciting wireless options with new technologies being developed and continuously improved upon. Thank you very much for joining me in this Taking Care segment. Stay tuned for the next Taking Care segment.